Welcome to tutorial two in iPhone app creation with Xcode and Swift 2.0. So this tutorial we are going to create an app that allows a user to enter a number in a text field, enter a second number, and when they click a button it's going to add those two numbers. So let's get started. So to start with we are going to create a new Xcode project and we're going to do single view application. Uh, let's say we'll call it add num and again this stuff doesn't matter if you do have a website name the convention is to put com dot your website name so in other words the reverse of a web address make sure you choose Swift set this to universal this doesn't particularly matter right now I'm gonna create this on the desktop and we are going to work with main dot storyboard this is the screen of the phone and view controller.swift, which is where our code is going to go. So, as I explained last time, when Apple made their phones, uh, they were beginning, when they first started making their phones, there was only one size, and now there's many. So auto layout is a way to deal with that, but it involves extra steps. So we're just not going to deal with that here and disable class sizes, which gives us something that looks more like an iPhone. So we're going to go down to the object library, and what we need is a text field, actually two text fields. So we're going to drag those onto the storyboard, and a text field is just an open box that allows a, a user to enter a text or a number. We are also going to need a button so that the user can click it to make something happen, which is going to be to take a value here, a value here, and add them. And lastly, we need a label so that the output text can be displayed here. And we're going to stretch this out so that we can have a longer line. And I'm going to show you one little interesting trick if you want to make this more than one line, you can't just stretch this out. You have to allow it to wrap down um, into two or more lines. Also, since this text field is somewhat transparent, we're going to go ahead and change the background color of the screen. So we're going to go to View, and we're going to change this to, I don't know, let's say a light gray color. Okay, so now these will show up much better on our screen when we go to do this. Okay, let's move over to viewcontroller.swift, but we need to make the connections. So we're gonna use the show assistant editor so that we can see our connections being made right from the storyboard. And I'm gonna use these sliders to make myself a little more room. And the first thing we're going to do is control click drag after this first brace in view controller so that we can create the connection for this outlet. So I'm going to call this one my text field one. And this one we can just call my text field two. And these again are outlets. And we're going to skip the button. We're going to move to the label, which is also going to be an outlet. So this is going to be my label one. Connect. Okay, so now these are set up as outlets and variable names, my text field one, my text field two, and my label one. And now we need to connect the button. So this is going to go before the last curly brace. 
because this is going to be a method that we're going to type some code into. So go down here. Very important, make sure this is set to action. And we'll call this my button one. Now, if you notice, each of these little circles is uh, filled in. And this was something when I first started using Xcode that really got me confused why some of my apps were crashing and I was getting error messages. You can actually look at each of these connections that you've made because sometimes you will make a connection, undo something, make a new connection, and you don't realize that you never deleted the second connection and that will throw an error. So if we click here, we should only have one connection. That is that my text field one is linked to the view controller, which is the uh, little iPhone that's on the storyboard. And each one of these should only have one connection. And here is my label one and the button is right here, the type of button. So if you end up doing this and you are not getting your app to run, you can always check the connections inspector and see if you have either a missing connection, in which case you need to redo your connection, or delete it if you have two connections to the same um, variable, to the same outlet. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to uh, write our code. And I think we have enough room in here. So the first thing we're going to do is say let first value. So we're going to make a new variable called first value. And we're going to say equals. Now a double is a type of number that has an accuracy to 15 digits. So you could also do a float an int, there's other options um, for numbers. Then we're going to say my text field one, Xcode is helping us to write this, my text field one dot text exclamation point. Now this exclamation point really um, took me a little bit to understand. What this statement is saying is we're going to let this new phrase first value equal a number to this level of accuracy of my text field one in here dot text. In other words, whatever's entered in here as a number is going to now be first value. Well, what's the exclamation point for? The way Swift works is if the first val my text field one if something's entered in there, it's not going to check what that is. This exclamation point unwraps it. And the best explanation that I read was that think of this as a present. And nobody's going to look inside the box. If you look inside the box and there's nothing there, this is going to, and you don't tell Xcode uh, Swift to do something, it's going to throw an error. So by putting the exclamation point in here, what it's doing is it says unwrap, find out what's inside the box. So we want to do that. Next, let second value. So we are going to now find out what's in, what the user entered in the second box. This is going to be my text field two dot text, and we will unwrap it. And now we are going to take a second value, which we can say is output value. And we're going to say that that is equal to also a double. And that is going to be, since we want to add these two numbers, we want to take that and that, whatever the user put in there, and add them. So we're going to do first value. except unwrapped, plus second value. So all that we've done is said, take the number from here, take the number from here, and add them up. But now we want to produce that result. So let's take my label one, 
which is text. And let's set that equal to the answer. So to do that, we can write whatever we want, the answer is, and now we need to put in output value, the output value. This warning's telling us we haven't used it yet. <coughs> so the way we do this is a front slash, put some parentheses, and then type in what you want to put in there, like that, and then close our quotes. So now it's going to say the answer is whatever the output value is. What is the output value? It's first value one plus second value. Where, what are those? Those are whatever the person entered in the text field. So I think we're ready to run our app. And hopefully this doesn't throw an error. All right, that's a good sign so far. Let's try it out. So we can enter a number like five, enter a second number like six, and we click button, and it gives us the answer. Okay, we still would like to clean this up and make this a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is add an if else statement. So the problem is, if the user ends up entering nothing, it's going to crash the app because it's looking for a number, it's trying to unwrap, and there's nothing in there. So that's that problem of the um, uh, why we put the exclamation point there. So let's go back to our main.storyboard. Actually, we don't need the storyboard. We can just uh, work in our code at this point. So it doesn't like this. Um, it's looking for something that something's not there. So let's do this. We're going to say if, and I wish somebody taught me this when I was watching, trying to learn coding originally. If the first value does not equal nil. So that is exclamation point equals does not, that means does not equal nil. And you have to do double ampersands. If second value does not equal nil, then do something. What do we want it to do? Whatever goes inside these brackets. If first value is not nothing, and the second value is not nothing, then add those two numbers. Uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, okay. I think I can get rid of that by cleaning it. Okay, there we go. That's kind of like refreshing, which is kind of nice. Okay, so now if it's nothing, or if it's not nothing, and if it's not nothing, then add them. Else, so if it is nothing, then we have to tell Swift, Swift needs to tell or Xcode needs to tell it to do something. So what should we have it do? Let's say this, my label one dot text is equal to, hey, enter, enter a number, buddy. So that now it's going to give the user a message that they better enter a number. Now we've got an error down here. Oh, I see why. Because we want to take this line and put this up here. Because we want to have it actually um, do this 
uh, before the else statement. Okay, so now everything's cleaned up here. It's not the prettiest, but it's okay. All right, so everything's good. The only other issue is that um, we don't really want the label to show up before the adding occurs. So we're going to do the same trick that we did in tutorial one, which is to go into view did load. So in the setup of the iPhone screen, we're going to say my label one dot hidden equals true, the Boolean statement for hiding my label one. Now, when we click the button, we want that label to show back up. So we're going to say my label one dot hidden equals false. Stop making it hidden. And let's go back to our main.storyboard and just do a couple more things to clean it up. Attributes inspector. Let's say it will now say add. And let's change the color because we got a gray background. Um, and let's make it a little bigger. Add the numbers. Um, that's going to become invisible. We can also do this. Um, this is kind of cool. In here, placeholder text. Enter number. Enter. Whoops. Enter. If I could spell enter. Enter number. And we can still add a label up here. And the label could just be static text that just sits there. So let's do a plus sign. Uh, let's make that red. Whoops. Okay. And we're going to say that number plus that number. And we're going to make that add. And then here's our answer output value. We should probably center that. Let's make that red too. Okay. I think that's everything. And we should run our app and see if that works even when the user doesn't put a number in. Okay, let's try it out. Five plus six. The answer is 11. Notice that it was, um, the label was hidden until we clicked the button. Now let's say the user didn't enter anything. Hey, that was nil. So else statement got activated and it says to enter a number. And now it works. Thanks for watching. I forget what I'm gonna do for tutorial three, but I'll do something.